If you are starting an Amazon FBA business, then I'm sure you're probably already aware of all the things you're gonna to need to do to set up your business and to launch your first product. However, there are a few things that I wanna go over in this video which are absolutely critical to the success of your Amazon FBA business. And these are three things that I see so many sellers overlook. So in front of me here, I've got a checklist I put together a while back that you can download for free from my website. I'm not gonna read out all of these, but it gives you guys an idea of all of the things that sellers need to do to launch their first product and get their business set up. But of these things, there are three things that come up over and over again. So I run a mentorship program on FBA Elite and I've mentored hundreds of sellers over the past few years. And it amazes me to this day how many times these issues come up again and again and again. And it really impacts the seller's chances of having success. So I wanted to go over those in these videos, talk you through the three things that are critical to the success of your Amazon FBA business. So up first, I wanna show you this example product. This is a toddler toilet seat and step. Now I know it's a super exciting product, but let me run X-Ray. Now this is a product I considered selling when I first started my Amazon FBA business back in 2018. And actually the stats aren't too bad at the moment. You know, the price point is still really healthy. There's a decent amount of demand. But the big issue, and this is an issue that I see so many sellers overlook, is the profitability in this niche can be very, very tight depending on how you take the product. So let's take, for example, the first organic list in here. This one here has a list price or a sale price of 28.49, which is a really good price. And usually if you're selling a product close to the 30 pound mark, there is good room to make profit on that. And if we go across, we can see the total fees for this are only seven pound 11. So the fees here, include both the referral fee, which is a percentage based on the category that that product is sold within, and also the fulfillment fee, which is based on the weight and dimensions of the external packaged product. So that's not bad at all. As a starting point, you have a sale price of 28.49 and the FBA fees to total seven pounds 11. That is a really good place to be. And these guys actually probably are making a decent profit. But unfortunately, what happens is a lot of new sellers, they'll look at this price point here they won't pay any attention to the fees. And then they might jump onto Alibaba and go, oh, well, I can actually source this for $4.20, you know, so about £3.50 or so. And all of a sudden they think they've got huge profit margins to work with. Now, there are a few things you need to be aware of. One, on Alibaba, the prices that are advertised are rarely the price you will end up paying. So you need to budget for the fact that your source cost is probably gonna be higher. Now, a lot of gurus are gonna tell you you're gonna negotiate down. And yes, you probably are gonna negotiate your prices down, but once you get a much higher price and they advertise on the listing. So that's one thing to be aware of. You're not gonna come in here and start sourcing these at four to five dollars per unit. The other thing to be aware of is these FBA fees can vary massively depending on the category you use, of course, but also the size and weight of your product. And this can just be like one centimeter difference can make a big, big impact on this product. So for example, if we look at these here, this is the number one seller. You know, you can see there it's got some steps and a seat at the top and the number three organic seller, similar sort of product, just different colors and stuff. But these guys are paying at 11 pound 44 in fees, so over four pound more in fees. And the chances are their margins are gonna be very, very tight because that's a huge chunk to be losing to your fees. And it might be because their, their product, the way they package it, is maybe a couple of centimeters different and it's put them into a different tier. And if we scroll over to this right-hand side, we'll probably see what's happening. So these guys here are classed as a standard parcel, whereas these guys are classed as standard oversized. And that is why the fulfillment fee is so high for that product. And that's why the overall FBA fees are so high. But if you hadn't checked that and planned for that, you could have very easily ordered this product, not taking into account the fact that you might be paying more than the advertised cost on Alibaba, not taking into account that you've got to design your product very carefully to ensure you get the most cost-effective FBA fees. And on top of that, you have freight fees at the moment, shipping fees are absolutely insane. So you could easily be spending two to three pound per unit to import products at the moment. So you need to take all of that into account because get that profitability sorted from the start because it's easier to walk away from a product then that isn't profitable than it is to get a thousand products imported. You start selling on Amazon and realize you're not really making any money. And plus on top of that, you then got to spend a huge amount on PPC to actually make any sales as well. So profitability is absolutely key. Check it again and again. Check it multiple times when you find the product, before you order the product, once you've got your freight forwarder costs, make sure those figures stack up. Otherwise, you'll be in a very, very bad position if you end up with a huge amount of inventory and very tight margins. Now, the next thing I wanna take a look at 
these are not salt lamps, but this is gonna help me emphasize the point I want you to make. So the first thing, profitability, and the second thing is your VSP. So you hear lots of people say about your USP, your unique selling point, but I want you guys to focus on a VSP, which is your visual selling point. It does not matter if you have the best product on Amazon, if customers do not know that. You need to have a visual way of communicating with your customer. Having a USP, if you can tell me you've got the best product because of X, Y, and Z, but that isn't clearly communicated in your main photo and your title, customers aren't gonna know that either. So, so important that when you're looking at these niches, you're thinking about, right, how can I stand out? And the reason I like to use the, the rock salt lamp niche is the products look identical, or well, not identical, but very, very similar throughout the entire niche. And people, I've tried to differentiate by adding packaging, which is certainly a viable option, but I still think you could come into this niche with a unique way of standing out, more so than just a basic box here, and you could really capture a lot of the potential audience. Now, I'm not saying this is a good niche because this price point has been driven down massively low compared to what it used to be. So I'd probably steer well clear away from this niche, but hopefully emphasize the fact how important it is that you need a visual selling point because you might have the best rock salt lamp in the world if the customer doesn't know that, they don't have a reason to click on your listing over someone else. Like these guys here, you know, they've got a couple of variations, so it makes their main photo stand out a bit more amongst this sea of sameness, which everyone else is doing. So super important, your profitability and your visual selling point. It's not all about having a unique selling point, it's about having a visual selling point that you can clearly communicate to your customer. And this next one is your keyword research, and this is hugely important for two reasons. One, you're gonna use those keywords to create your product listing. So it's so important, your title, description, bullet points, and backend keywords are all fully optimized. But also you're gonna use that data for your PPC as well. And I see lots of people just start selling on Amazon. They turn on a PPC auto campaign and let Amazon spend all of their money for them. And they waste an absolute fortune trying to find out the best keyword data when you can get it up front and use it to set up your listings initially and also your PPC campaigns as well. And I'm sure within like two or three minutes, I can show you guys how to get keywords that will be, make up you know 99% of what you will need. You can spend hours on keyword research, but in less than a few minutes, I'll be able to show you the quickest way of doing it. So for example here, if we take the salt lamp niche, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run X-Ray, and then I'm gonna go through this list, and I'm gonna tick the box next to all of the listings that have good sales. So the first thing I wanna do is get rid of those sponsored results. I don't wanna accidentally click on any sponsored results. So these guys here, 791 sales. I'm not necessarily too fast about these guys at 92. Amazon like to shuffle the search results. I've noticed more and more to give uh, lower selling products a chance to see how they perform higher up and then they shuffle them back down again. So always be careful when you're doing this. So you wanna take some of the top sellers. What I'm gonna do here is take 10 of them and then we're gonna analyze these. And what we're gonna do is something called a reverse ASIN. And by doing a reverse ASIN, let me just check that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's go down and find one more if we can in the hundreds, 160 there. So I'm gonna click run Cerebro on that. So we're doing a reverse ASIN. So what a reverse ASIN does is takes those 10 products and looks at all of the keyword data those 10 products are using. So we want to analyze all of those products to find the best possible keywords. Now there may be a very rare keyword that all of these guys are missed, but the chances are if these guys are the top sellers, the highest selling products, then they're gonna have all of the best keywords and we're gonna analyze these in a very quick and smart way to get the best keywords that you can use to set up your listing and PPC campaigns. So just a few filters you can use. I'm not gonna go through all of these, but you only need to use two or three filters to get the best results. So the first thing, a minimum search volume of 100, that'll help get rid of any of the super low volume keywords that you don't wanna use. Now, if you wanna do maybe a long tail PPC campaign at some point, you might wanna come back and run this again, but with a maximum search volume of only 100. But we're just trying to capture like 99% of the traffic at the moment. So that's why I'm going with a search volume of above 100 searches per month. The next thing I wanna do is to look at this here, the ranking competitors count. So we're analyzing 10 other products. So what I wanna do is I wanna pull keywords that appear in at least five of those listings because the keywords appear in at least five of those listings is a good chance it is a very good keyword that you want to use. And the only other filter I'm gonna apply at the moment is the word count. I want keywords with at least two words in it because otherwise you'll get search results for individual keywords, which are far too competitive to compete against and often irrelevant as well. So a minimum of two words in the keyword phrase. And you can see at the moment we have 26,000 keywords, but if I apply the filters that I've just entered, 
Let's see what we get. So this has pulled it down to 374 keywords. And if we come down here, you can see we've got the most relevant ones straight away. So salt lamp, salt lamps, Himalayan salt lamps, large salt lamp, pink salt lamp. So this is it. And like I said before, you can spend a lot more time than this, a good few hours doing really detailed keyword research. But if you're just looking to capture 90% plus of the traffic that's coming and all of the best keywords, do this in less than five minutes and you'll have all the keywords you need to set up your listing and give yourself a great chance of setting up some PPC campaigns that are actually going to deliver some results for you. So those are the three things I want you to focus on. Profitability, your visual selling point and doing the correct keyword research to help you set up your product listing and your PPC campaigns. Now, if you wanted to download that checklist I just showed at the start of the video to ensure you don't miss anything when setting up your FBA business, just go to fbaelite.com, go to the resources section there and you can download the ultimate Amazon FBA checklist. We've also got the product research checklist plus there's a, there's a profit calculator on it somewhere as well. well. There we go, the profit calculator as well. So you need that to help with calculating your profits. And if you wanna find out more about Amazon FBA in general, we do have the course as well if you wanna get ahead of the curve and find out all of my latest information that is available as well. So hopefully you guys found this video useful. If you did, I'd appreciate it. Hit that like button. If you wanna see more from me, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys on the forums.